Okay, welcome back to theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of EMC World. Three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage, we're day two. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with Stu Miniman of Wikibon, uh, senior analyst at Wikibon. And we're here with Ben Smith of Epic Systems. Welcome to theCUBE. Uh, thanks for having me. So, um, Brian, you're an Scott. engineer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk tech here. What do you think of the show? Come on, an honest opinion. Uh, it's all right. It's, uh, I think it's just uh, like any other show that's out there, kind of Oracle, Microsoft, all, all the same deal. But um, um, it's, it's a good opportunity to uh, see what new products are out there. It's kind of salesy, but uh, it's a good show. What do you think about the whole notion of separating the control plane, the data plane from EMC? You think it's solid? Um, I, I think it's getting there. I think it's getting there. Um, I think that's, um, I, th that's what we need. So, but I think um, a, a lot of it needs to get back to um, some of the unifying the data center, unifying the management of the data center, and um, it's really been a, a lot of cloud, and kind of um, just really unifying all that infrastructure. Talk about your company, Epic, Epic Systems. What do, what do you guys do? Um, we are a e-discovery provider. So, um, I don't know if you know what e-discovery is, yep, right? Yep, so, there, we, that. We, we get a large amount of data, and uh, most of it is really unstructured, just documents and um, forms of just about any type you can imagine. So obviously, you know, legal and CFOs and general counsels love e-discovery because storage, they love storage because they can store everything. Right. Um, and sometimes that could be a double-edged sword. Um, you lost it, where is it? So what are the challenges, I mean, at that? And this kind of points to some of the things we talked about service mesh on day one, the company doing a lot of automation because compliance is, is huge. Huge problem right now. So how do you, how do people deal with this? Well, the biggest challenge we face is, um, you know, lawyers are, um, they're very paranoid, right? So they're very concerned about this data. So th the challenge we have is we have all this data that we have, and they're very afraid of deleting the data or wh where it's going to go, having it online, having it accessible. So for us, having multiple tiers of storage where we can place that data and still be able to access it without it being you know, offline, taking weeks to get to it. So I mean, that's really one of the largest challenges that we have. Is, what is the technical challenge? Is there, is it just software? Is it just gear? Is it, what's just facilities? Uh, it's scalability and facilities. So you, to, to remain competitive, right, your infrastructure, you, you can't just keep throwing storage at it and taking up space in a data center. So for us, it's uh, you know, reducing footprint um, and having uh, massive scalability um, and having stability out there, right? So. Um, most of the uh, data we get in has a timeline that's tied to it that's been dictated by a court, right? So we've got to spit that data out pretty quickly. So, so Brian, can, can you give us a little bit of you know, speeds and feeds of your environment? You know, what's your growth look like? You know, how, how large is your environment? Uh, our, our environment, uh, it, it doubles every year, easily doubles every year. So um, we try to, uh, we get in terabytes of data um, overnight and we'll usually try to process two to four terabytes um, per day is kind of our, our goal. And um, it's just massive amounts of data that's, uh, there's really no predictability to um, the data that we have coming in. Okay, and, and can you, you talk to us a little bit about the infrastructure that's enabling uh, your environment and kind of your history with it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, over about um, 18 months ago, we started using Isilon. So we were on Solera and we kind of had some of the limitation of like a 16 terabyte file system. And so what Isilon has enabled us to do is really have this massive uh, file system. And so um, we, we've implemented Isilon with, uh, we've got a lot of uh, VMware virtualized environment out there with UCS. Um, and then um, we utilize VMAX and uh, VNX um, platforms for some of our database stuff. So, okay. so are, you, are you using, I'm sorry, the, the virtualization with Isilon then? Uh, we haven't actually started storing our virtual machines on the Isilon, but a lot of our um, virtual uh, environments are accessing the data from there. They're writing to it. Um, nothing cool yet with uh, NFS, with VMware, but we're uh, definitely looking at that, so. Okay, um, and have you ever d done any of the object storage as, as part of your environment? We have not with, uh, we, we've looked at it, there's some, um, some interesting things with that, but we've not done that yet, so. What's attracting about Isilon for you guys? Because we, you know, we hear so many success stories, but 
they're all over the place. I mean, there's so many use cases that, that work, and you guys are in the e-discovery. Can you just share us why they're, why you guys work with those guys? The uh, biggest selling point for Isilon, for Epic, was the scalability. So we can just throw a node in and have that instant 100 terabytes of capacity available right there, right? And um, the, the clustered file system, so the availability is a, is a big perk to us, right? We can't afford to have our systems going down. So when you look at some of these other um, solutions that are out there, your, limited, your, your limitation is the file system, which is usually around that 16 terabyte. Some of them got some, ha have some larger limitations now, but uh, we scale well beyond that, and so uh, that's Just, a That's huge. a size issue. That's a size issue. And if you need more, you got to get another cluster? Yeah, you got to build another silo, so, or uh, get another head. So with Isilon, you've got this, it, it's not infinite, but you have all this compute. You throw in compute, cache, memory, whatever you need at it, and still have that same file system accessible, and just keep throwing more performance in front of it. So just less work. Less work, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> building out more stuff. But you can just throw more gear at when you need it. Right, absolutely. So it's, it's um, definitely um, more cost effective as well to use a solution like Isilon because we, just, we don't have to go buy an entire new cluster once we've hit this limitation. We just add another node and we've got instant capacity. Talk about the management side of it. What's the manageability like? I mean, they have, is it autom a lot of automation built in? Is there a lot of heavy lifting on your end? What, is, what, what happens? So when we uh, first got Isilon, I, uh, one of the first things we said were, um, Where's the rest of the interface, right? Because it's so simplified. I mean, it's really just point, click, point, click. So uh, it, it was really uh, different from other platforms that you use. But uh, um, it's, it's extremely simple. There's not a lot of complexity to it. I mean, really, you plug it in, um, you push a button on another node, and it adds it, right? So I mean, when you want to uh, add a user, you click a button. It's super simplified, and it integrates uh, with existing solutions like Active Directory, whatever else you have, might, might have out there. Talk about your environment. What are some of the challenges in your IT environment? And as, as other guys look at storage decisions, what do they should be thinking about and based on what you guys are doing? So first of all, your environment, some of the challenges you have, whether it's the network, it's storage, it's applications, what's the key, key uh, challenges? Um, well, our biggest challenge is we have, our infrastructure has become so large, right? And so um, keeping a converged um, kind of insight into what's going on in your environment and understanding all the moving parts that are out there, um, it, it's pretty challenging. So I think, um, you, know, you know, you've got all this data you're trying to push in um, a short amount of time. You've got the network that you have to worry about. You have to worry about the bandwidth. Are you exceeding the bandwidth here? Is it somewhere else? Am I replicating? Am I protecting this information? Am I, uh, you don't want to take it too far, but you want to protect your data at the, at, at the right level. So the yeah. so, so challenge is, do we replicate this data? Do we not replicate this yep. data? Do I keep it for six years? Do I keep it for three years? Yeah, so and you guys so run policy on that. You have to, right? But but the e-discovery, is it all active data? Is it more? It really depends. So every case is different. Um, every matter is different. So it, it a case could be active for you know, 10, 15 years. You got to keep that data. What do you do with that data? And so um, the classification active, it really depends on the scenario. Got so, it. Yeah. So, so, so Brian, your, your company is around the globe, yes. uh, I believe. Can you tell us <coughs> how you're managing kind of the data challenges of that? So um, each of our different uh, business units is, is uh, unique in their own way. So, um, and as you ha operate in different countries, there's different laws regarding data privacy, and uh, th those have their own challenges that they bring to it. Um, we've really tried to standardize and make it into a cookie cutter approach where we just you know, have this factor where we just spit out the same solution over and over again. So, um, and that's really, we're getting to that model, we're not there everywhere yet, but um, as we get to that, I think it's, um, it really simplifies the management of our environment. And we can really scale and just reuse um, hardware wherever we need to reuse it at. So I mean, we can take one from one location as it scales up or down and move it to another. And so that's really, um, Virtualization has really enabled us to do a lot of that, right? So we can do um, BDI and just turn it up in a different data center wherever we need to turn it up. So. Yes, so, so how, how do you look at kind of the whole cloud wave that's going on? Uh, you know, are you using public cloud? Uh, and how, how, do, how does cloud play into your environment? We are not using uh, public cloud. Um, we kind of have our own private cloud when you look at it that way. Um, do the data that we have, we can't really take it out there. And that's just a big challenge. It would be really nice to see a cloud that's out there where, um, you, know, you could put certain types of data out there that maybe customers wouldn't be okay with you taking out. I mean, there's a lot of sensitive information that you have out there. I think cloud's still kind of a buzzword, um, and it's, it's a lot of hype that's associated with it, but uh, it's, it's getting there. 
It's really Pat scalable. Pat Gelsinger said it's just the, the data center. Private cloud is just a data center. It's just a data It's just scalability, right? So you're just outsourcing your success at that point. I mean, it's really scalability and stability. So I, I, there's not a lot to cloud that's out there. Brian, my final question, we're tight on time here, but is share with the folks out there what you've learned. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you're on the cutting edge. Obviously, Isilon's a great product, but storage is a big challenge. There's always going to be a challenge in the year. At EMC World, it's clear that it's not going away, right? right. It's going to get more complex, hopefully easier, as it distracts away. What's the, what advice would you share with other IT pros out there? Um, always uh, plan ahead, right? So always, always build for scalability, so you can add on to that. Don't pigeonhole yourself into just kind of this corner where you can't scale anymore, right? So it's always planning ahead. Brian Smith here at Epic Systems here uh, at theCUBE. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. We're at EMC World, this is SiliconANGLE, and we'll keep on theCUBE coverage day two. We'll be right back with the next guest. <laughs>